COVID showed us that we're very exposed. I think there was a report out of London from a, a London think tank that of the five eyes countries that you mentioned, Australia is the most dependent of all uh, on uh, other countries, mainly China, for supply chain security. Even agriculture is dependent upon certain income, uh, inputs that we no longer produce or only produce in very limited amounts that are critical to us feeding ourselves. One of the worries I have there is that immediately now the debate that COVID's easing is going back to, oh, we've got to be pure on climate change. Now, I'm not saying it's not important, but I am worried about the emotionalism of it. We seem to have lost sight of the fact that the Australian people expect their governments to prepare. We expected COVID. We all believe in our nation now. Uh, you know, we look to our own governments, not some global power out there, you know, the way the anywheres uh, that Lockhart talked about um, uh, might have uh, looked at uh, to look after us. Well, that supply chain issue has not gone away. And the cost of energy is one of the main reasons why we've got into trouble. And I'm amazed about the debate on the cost of energy in this country. When we left office, we had, I think, the cheapest electricity in the Western world. But energy right across the board now is quite crippling. And there hasn't been enough debate about, well, all right, well, if we keep on interfering with energy markets, if we, allow, if we don't really get our energy costs down, we just won't restore manufacturing. And that may be critical in some supply chain areas, whether it's food, whether it's medicine, whether it's keeping mm. basic industries going if something goes wrong. I'm, I'm, I'll come to the um, energy climate change issue in a moment, but just on COVID, I think the most important thing uh, that has to be um, observed, deduced, included from the COVID experience is how well Australia has done. Mm and how well the institutions of our country have worked. Now, this is not complacency or smugness, but Australia, when you consider the size and the sort of society we are, and freewheeling democratic society, people don't take all that warmly, uh, sort of being told what to do, but, but it, it's been done in a way that uh, makes me feel very proud of what our country has achieved, and we shouldn't lose sight of that. One of the great things that's come out of this is, is that <clears throat> we we've appear unlike other <clears throat> like countries, and I think of Britain, I think of America, we appear to have found a sweet spot between the government's role and the private sector's role. Our health system has come through with flying colours. Now there have been weaknesses and there have been overdoses of a vaccine. The fact that... You know, we have a national debate about that, you know, serious though the issue is, and I'm not making light of it, illustrates just how well we've done. Um, uh, and, and our death per head population is one thirty-fifth, one thirty-fifth of what it is in, in Britain. Mm. And you look at the, co and the cooperation between the states of Australia, sure, I'm irked by some of the grandstanding of premiers and so forth, but I accept from that. Of course, uh, Gladys Berejiklian in New South Wales, not because she's a liberal and a friend of mine, but because she has adopted a very common sense, balanced approach. But having said all of that, and even accepting there have been big mistakes made with quarantine in Victoria, I think we have come through so well. And, and the Federation has worked. Some people have expressed alarm that the premiers are you know, um, on the stage and strutting their stuff. That's our system, public health under our constitution is a state responsibility. It's not a federal responsibility. So let the federation work. Sure, there have been some abuses, but that will, and over uh, egging of the pudding on occasions, but the federation's not gonna break up. It's an alarmist tool, uh, I think it's ridiculous. And, and the other great thing is the way in which we've had a seamless cooperation between the public sector and the private sector. Uh, both have made a contribution and, and the fact that we do have a, a, a very, we have a decentralised administration of public health because of the states and within the states, and I think particularly the one with which I'm most familiar where I live in, in Sydney, in New South Wales, the breaking down of the administration of public health in this state has aided um, the uh, response and the contract tracing system is terrific. 
Now, by comparison, I look at Britain. I mean, everybody on all sides of politics in Britain carries on as though the national health system is the greatest invention in mankind's history. Now, I'm sure uh, it's got a lot of virtues and everything, but I'm also suspicious that the very uniformity of it is perhaps one of the reasons why uh, Britain has not done so well. There are other reasons as well, and, and I'm not trying to score cheap debating points at the, ex at the expense of the Brits, but um, I think this is an occasion where without getting smug or complacent and putting aside the irritable irritation we feel <laughs> with the behaviour of some premiers and the arbitrary closures and, 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 and you know, absurd comments like uh, um, Anastasia's Palaszczuk's comment about we've got, you know, New South Wales hospitals for New South Wales people and Queensland hospitals for our people. Well, there's no such thing as our people or your people. We're all Australians. And those sort of comments are, are aggravating and, and deserve to be condemned. But having said all of that, the system has worked. And we are remarkably lucky. Yes, we are. Uh, uh, and, and we should be very grateful. Now, why has it worked? Work because climate, it's helped. Yeah. Uh, we're an island continent, yeah. that's helped. Um, we've, we've got a federation, which means that when you have trouble spots in one part of the country, they can be contained. And what's the difference in principle between locking down the Northern Beaches area of Sydney and locking down a state? No difference in principle. Which print, the concept is the same. You have an outbreak in a particular area, you know the source of it, and, 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 and you lock it down. Now everybody clapped, well not everybody clapped, but a lot of people accepted that lockdown in the Northern Beaches area as being very necessary. Well, equally, sometimes when states are locked down, uh, that ought to be accepted now. Uh, I, I say all of that, recognising that there are legitimate criticisms of, of individual states and the grandstanding, and we'll put all of that aside. But we have done so well uh, with this, and the Federation has worked. The public-private balance has worked. Uh, and um, we, sh we should feel that you know, we're, we're entitled to give ourselves just a modest tick for that, not, not get complacent. And, and sure, there are, you, know, you were talking about supply chain, yeah, there are difficulties, and, and, and I think the exposure of our potential vulnerabilities in that area has been very valuable, very valuable indeed. I'm not sure that there's a simple solution to that. You don't alter um, supply chains overnight, uh, and, and of course, how that plays into the energy debate uh, is obvious. I can't think of a, a better response other than to remind you of what I said a few moments ago about the absurdity of, of clapping the, uh, or cheering on the erosion of, of coal and the like as a contribution without understanding its continuing part of the energy equation. I mean, it is, a hard question to answer, isn't it, that we have got such expensive electricity now in some parts of the country compared with what it was 10 or 15 years ago. Well, it's a real issue. It is. And it does affect our international competitiveness. Of course. And, and, and that, of course, plays on things such as supply chain. Because in the yes. end, all those things are, are, are a product of, of, of the economic environment and and... Why have we lost manufacturing? Because it's cheaper to make things in other countries. Yes, it is. Yes. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And that is a challenge. And I think my real point is that in the range of challenging issues that confront us, we need to be a little more honest and a bit more rational in debates over important things like emissions mm. and recognise that there are trade-offs. It's not as simple as saying there's <clears> some new nirvana, you know, if, if we just go down the renewables road, if you're not careful you'll end up, this is the great irony of it, you'll end up producing a worse global outcome oh, yes. because we force efficient mm. industries, cleaner producing smelters or whatever offshore from Australia. The world's not going to stop producing mm. or consuming the aluminium that they make. It'll be made in a country where the standards are lower and where the emissions are higher. Will. Of course and we will. need to be more sophisticated well, that was in the way one we of, think this through. That was one of the reasons, one of many reasons years ago why I was reluctant to see Australia ratify the Kyoto Protocol because the way it worked would have in part produced that outcome. But and that's that's history now. We exceeded those targets uh, anyway, as, as you know, 
uh, the Kyoto targets without ratifying. Mm. Uh, and of course, it was done largely by land management. Practices. Well, land land management, and, mm. and that's right, because you can mm. these things, and some of that was deliberate, some of it was fortuitous, and, and that often happens. And, and and the, I mean, I remember having years ago having a conversation with Tony Blair, uh, not laugh, not long after he'd become Prime Minister of Britain, and and he was telling me how, of course, you know, Britain had no trouble using his emissions because coal mines were being closed. Yes. And you know, and I thought to myself, yes. And who opposed the closure? <laughs> he and his party railed against yeah. Margaret Thatcher for uh, her policies that allowed inefficient mm. coal mines mm. to close. I can't help making the observation through uh, on the way through that, in fact, just as we exceeded our Kyoto targets because of land management practices, a big part of the solution to the problem of emissions and absorbing carbon again can be found in agriculture oh, and yes. land management. Oh, yeah. uh, technology, uh, oh. Uh, uh, that's a whole, uh, yeah. that land management is yes. a whole subject in itself. And Australia, we're, we're, we're up there with the world's best. We may even be the world's best. And we're just close to cracking the secrets of quick, easy, affordable soil carbon measurement, which will allow for the issuing of permits much more widely extra income stream for farmers and better quality food if we can get it right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are clever people in this country yeah. and there are real options that we don't talk about enough. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.